Hi, I'm Tim, and I'm hiking the Pacific Crest Trail this year. Every day, um, the subscriptions that come in and the likes on the videos, it makes me feel like I'm sharing this journey with you, and that makes me very happy. Thank you. Um, so yeah, um, subscribe and like the video if, if it's working for you. Again, thanks. I recently watched a webinar put on by Matt Parker, AKA Double Tap, who maintains the water report, the PCT water report with Half Mile. They plan on rolling in to the PCT water report, snow reports. And this is kind of a big deal. If you are planning on being in the Sierra this year, um, you probably want to check this out. Uh, he, along with Ned Tibbetts, who has a lot of mountaineering experience in the Sierra, discussed pass approach strategies, uh, river and creek crossings, exit points, resupply, uh, flip-flopping. Um, it was a really great webinar, and I'm going to put the link below. Um, you should check it out. It's pretty good. So the webinar got me thinking once again about what I plan on doing in the Sierra. That led to this video. First, just kind of as another note, I bought the Ultra Lone Peak 3 Trail Runners. I'm super impressed with these things. So I'll talk about these for a minute or two. I also bought the Corsair Camp Ice Axe and plan on using this rather than my Gribble. And finally, the Catula hiking crampons. These are not um, micro spikes. These are actual um, crampons. And uh, you can see they're much more aggressive than the uh, micro spikes are. These are made by Catula, uh, designed for use with lightweight shoes, that is light boots, and they're designed for trail runners. They have a few things that are distinctly different from mountaineering uh, or full crampons. Um, primarily the way that the, um, they attach to the forefront of the shoe. Um, I have a set of uh, full crampons that work great with mountaineering boots, but when you put a soft forefront shoe in them, like a trail runner or a lightweight boot, by the time you crank that down, they have crushed my toes. Whereas um, this binding here is rather comfortable and does work well with soft forefront shoes like um, trail runners. I think they're pretty cool and I plan on using these in the Sierra this year. So um, hope you enjoy it. Um, here we go. These ultras, man, these are great, great shoes. This is the gator trap on these ultras that come with this. Feel back. There's a little Velcro there. If you're using Dirty Girl Gators, which I am, you know that these uh, require a little Velcro on the back of the shoe, and it's already there for you. Ta-da! It's already there. And then they've got this little clip on the front, right? That goes clips on the front. These Ultras have got this little plastic clip on the front where you can just go <laughs> What a benefit. So I bought these Ultras um, last week at REI because I had my dividends and there was a 20% off any new thing. So I bought them and I sized them up like you're, like you're uh, supposed to do. I can lace them down well enough right now that they're very comfortable even though they're a size larger than I would normally get. It's the toe box in these things. Can you see that toe box? This toe box is massive and it's super, super comfortable. I probably put about 20 miles on these over the weekend. They feel great. I'm, I'm think that this was a really good choice. So if you haven't gotten your shoes yet, uh, look into these ultras. This is the the Ultra Lone Peak Threes. All right, so that's the ultras. Great shoes. Maybe these are right for you as well. So the typical gear that people use in the Sierra is a ice axe. This is my gribble and, and micro spikes, right? So this is what we use uh, frequently for uh, the snow and ice walk-ups around here like Mount uh, St. Helens or Mount Adams or South Sister. 
Micro spikes, however, well, no, let's first go to the ice packs. I want to open up this package here. <laughs> Sealed with a kiss. This is uh, from uh, Moose Jaw. I like this. No knife, use teeth. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to use my teeth. I'll just use this. No, I'll just use this to open the box. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Tim. Ah, it is what I thought it would be. The camp ice axe. All right, let's take a look at this. There it is. Look at that, it's light. Huh, feels pretty good. This was supposed to be 70 centimeters. I think this is too. Well, I wanna weigh them real quick. Let's see, the Gribble's got a leash on it, and that's kind of, uh, can add a little weight. So let me take off the leash, taking off the leash. All right, I've got a scale down here. Gribble comes in at 16.4 ounces. Uh, the Camp comes in at 9.9 .9 ounces. That's a savings. Uh, not quite as much as I thought it would be. My intent was to take the Camp. So, I've got a choice now. Back to the micro spikes. I have the Catulas, very, very good micro spikes. I've used these Catulas for many years and they're great, um, a great traction. There are some limitations to the micro spikes. Obviously the spike itself, I think these are three eighths, uh, not terribly large, especially when compared to <laughs> regular crampons, which are, um, an inch and a half, big difference. Some of the limitations I found with the micro spikes is when you get into kind of mushy, slushy, junky snow, you sometimes just don't get the grip that you really want on these and they'll slide out um, underneath you. The other problem I found with them is sometimes uh, I don't take the time to really slip them on correctly. These are larger shoes than I would normally wear and I probably would get a larger size of micro spikes if this was what I was wearing all the time. So I do have to tug on these more than I would normally have to. But I think you can see that if you're putting, if these are on the bottom of your shoes, I'm sorry, if you've got your shoes on your feet and you're trying to just reach down and put them up, it takes some effort to get these on. Even when I'm wearing my, my normal size shoes, um, there's a little effort to do it. And if you don't get it attached in the back properly, uh, as you can see right here, I didn't even get this on well or correctly. It's not lined up. Now, they can slide off the shoe, or sometimes you get them put on like this with loose chains, and the same thing can kind of happen in the front. It happens, something like this. This reminds me of a time I was going up Onianta and I put, you know, again, just reaching down and slapping them on real quick. I put them on upside down. So I was wondering, why the hell aren't these working? Because I was slipping around. Uh, yeah, well, it's me, not you. <laughs> I'm sorry. In the webinar that I mentioned, Ned Tibbetts was also talking about the fact that they can slip around a little bit on you. And that's probably not something that you want to have happen when you're crossing the um, chute on Forrester Pass. So this year in the Sierra, I expect um, a lot of people will be using micro spikes. If, if that's what you're comfortable with, then that is great. So in the back of my mind, I had been thinking about using um, full crampons. These are my Gribble uh, G10s, and they work really well with mountaineering boots. Um, these are my La Sportiva Evos. Uh, you get a great fit on these things. Uh, they don't slip, they don't slide, and of course you're going to get uh, really good traction. The other thing 
that some people will say is these spikes. Of course, these spikes are made to drive into steep snow or you know ice, and because these boots are stiff, you um, can drive those into ice and stand just on this with the stiffness of, of these boots. And that is something I, I don't need. And of course, it would not be possible for me to wear these boots um, day after day after day all day long. Simply not gonna work. Okay, so in the past, I have um, attached these uh, gribbles to regular hiking boots. There's a problem though. These boots, unlike mountaineering boots, these boots have this soft uh, forefront on them. And by the time you crank your crampons down and get them fitted, fit securely, well, <laughs> by the time you get them on securely, my toe is crushed. I've done this before. Sounds like a great idea and it works for a few hours, but by the time uh, you're coming back down, your foot is in pure agony. Another point you'll hear people bring up um, is that uh, as you're walking with these and if you don't really know how to walk with crampons on, you can take out your Achilles with these things. I hurt my Achilles about three and a half years ago and it's not good. So, <laughs> There you go. As much as I thought this might be an approach that would work, uh, it won't for me. So what do I do? In the webinar, Ned Tibbetts was talking about the use of micro spikes and brought up uh, this, the desirability, perhaps, of hiking crampons. I had never heard of hiking crampons prior to him bringing this up and looked into them a little bit. These are actually made by Catula as well. These are the Catula KTS hiking crampons. There's a couple things that are really cool about these. Well, first, Catula manufactures and markets these to be used with trail runners. Um, mind blowing compared to the micro spikes you see that we've got uh, roughly three eighths of an inch compared to a full inch um, teeth are not as big as the gribbles these come in at about an inch and a half whereas these come in at about an inch nevertheless they are clearly giving you um, significantly more traction than you'll get from the micro spikes the other big difference is how they bind or strap to your shoes. Whereas this really requires a very tight binding um, right in this area. Here is my Ultra with the Catulas on. The front binding is well distributed and very comfortable over the forefront of the foot. Nice positive lock. The ankle strap is, is quite comfortable. Um, there's nothing protruding and um, it is well binds down very comfortably. And if they are properly attached, <laughs> remember I have a problem properly putting micro spikes on. <laughs> okay. But if these are attached properly and these things will not move around on you, um, it remains flexible as you would want it to. It turns. They also fit my lightweight keen boots as well as they fit the um, Ultras. Also note that I sized up on my Ultras. I normally wear a size 12. These are 14s. <laughs> Let me say that again. These are 14s. These are big enough for Shaquille O'Neal. These things are very spacious. The point, right, is to allow the, the the foot swelling and expansion that, that will probably occur. The crampons only come in a small, medium, and then a medium-large. So I was really concerned, but they fit it 
they 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 fit the ultras in a size 14 very well that's good the other thing to note is that the front spikes are pointed out somewhat but not like the regular crampons are the aggressive teeth that you find on the regular crampons these are much gentler and while i think we you still would need to be careful of course you're not going to uh, take out your achilles with these or certainly you're less likely to plus i like the red that looks kind of cool doesn't it <laughs> so all in all i'm really happy with these i have not taken them out in the snow yet I do plan to do that probably this weekend. So with all this said, I think that this is the gear I will be using in the Sierra this year.